Emerson. Anyway, Amen. it's great to see you all. 
Thank you, Shelly. <coughs> Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have survived the staying at home because I really didn't stay at home that much. <laughs> I did everything right. I always wore a mask. I went out and I shopped and I took food to people. And uh, when we really didn't socialize until this past week, where a group of my pals from exercise, because we're not exercising, we got together in someone's backyard and had coffee. And it was fun. We never stopped talking. We laughed, we joked. And um, also last week, four of us from our Bible study went and had breakfast in a restaurant where they served Woo -hoo! and we got her coffee. Yeah. And she got her refills. <laughs> she got her refills. So um, yeah, I encourage everyone to be do what you feel very secure in. Uh, we do wear masks when we need to wear them, and if we don't, I'm very happy to take mine off right now. Every breath I take becoming foggy. So, welcome back, everyone. Mike, thank you, Denise.
the piano for us through all this. So thank you, Rhonda. Lord, we thank you for bringing us back together after all this. Thank you, thank thank you for sharing us with the Lord of our togetherness. We seek your help in following our new worship requirements that feel strange and uncomfortable. Bless us these masks and bless our spacing. Give us a sense of closeness and unity. We are, we are one in you, Lord, bound up together in a common Christian cause and faith. Wherever we may be in this moment, we are all one in you, Lord. Let us feel the joy and thankfulness of being in fellowship and worship together again. As we enter a new chapter in our faith together, lead us forward. Sharon, go ahead and we'll do the children's service. How's that, Mary? Yep. Good. Yeah, Mary. So I was saying, we all look like bandits, don't we, Megan? Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord, what is going on here? Sometimes the world is kind of crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we don't get to be with our friends like we want to, do we? Yeah. Yeah. This has been a crazy thing, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Have you had to stay home a lot? No. No? Julie, have you had to stay home a lot? Pretty much. A lot of people have had to stay home. Well, I got to go to the Grammys. Oh, you got to go to the Grammys? Did she have fun with you? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. But now we're back, aren't we? And we're going to keep moving forward, aren't we? Are we going to try our very, very best? Yeah. We're going to try our very, very best, aren't we? And why do you think we're all back? You don't know? <laughs> Do you think we're all back because maybe God said, you know what, I think you guys can be back. I th think he's been kind of wondering why we've been so scared. We don't have to be scared, do we? Do we have to be scared? See, Megan's got it right. She's not scared. You know why? Do we believe in God? Do we? I think if we believe in God, God's going to keep us safe no matter what. And sometimes we have to do extra steps to try to be even more safe. But I think we just need to remember, let's trust in God and move forward, huh? Yes. I think that's a good plan. Should we say a prayer? Yes. Dear God, help us to be safe. Help us to be safe. We know you watch over us. We know you watch over us. Please continue to guide us. Help us to take care of each other. Help us to take care of each other. Amen. Amen. Now let us join in singing in 2041. Thou art worthy. It's actually in the papers.
Please be seated. It's our time of prayer in the community. We're grateful here this morning to be able to be here in body and spirit. And for all those who are joining us virtually on Facebook Live, and for all those who will watch it later, we're thankful for each and every person. Join me in say, reciting our prayer for the community. We are a community of faith, thankful to meet together. Thankfully, we can return to our church safely for worship and fellowship. We pray for your guidance as we navigate the conference of expectations for being together. Make this challenge one that will increase our commitment to one another and to you. We pray that all our Methodist churches will be able to safely resume their church worship services. We pray for all those among us who suffer from illness and for all those who cannot join us. We also pray for all those among us who suffer from illness. Nobody can know this song, this hymn. 
So we're going to sing it again, one, three, and four, and uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it. Man, why did I take this off? 
It's not a good association with church, is it? <laughs> to associate church with suffocation. Not, not a good one, but we know this is temporary, right? I'm really glad to see all of you here today. I mean, really, really glad. Can you tell I'm glad? Here, I'm smiling. <laughs> Quick, last up again. To see your eyes looking behind your masks, your smiles, I'm assuming. Uh, some of us are still at home, being careful, and we re reach out to you through social media. And uh, are here today welcoming you. The hearing aids, a microphone on my ear, and a mask. It's <laughs> sort of a challenge day. <clears throat> so I'm Pastor Rob, I'm the minister here at Rainy Island Methodist Church, and we're glad to have all of you familiar and unfamiliar faces back. Our message this morning, it is no surprise to you, is a message about community and belonging. It's about what makes community so central to our faith as believers, as Christians. We're here today face to face, sort of mask to mask, for the first time in how long, Ruth? Three months. Two months? Three, three months. Three months. That is a lot of social isolation. You have endured a lot. And I congratulate you for finding ways to cope, to stay healthy, and uh, be encouraged in a difficult time. It's like Michelle, we read that devotional. She says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we feel like that shadow of death, the cold that is hovering everywhere in the culture. And so we, we have to activate parts of our lives and hearts and minds and spirits that may not have come to life when we were not on alert, right? So I imagine some of you have <clears throat> lots of stories to tell. In fact, after the service, we'll have time for you to share and ask questions uh, about uh, the church and the conference and what we're doing and so forth if you want to stay in and, uh, and share some with us. <clears throat> in the scripture from Matthew, Jesus shares one of the most memorable verses in the gospel. It's a verse that Rex shared with me, what, three weeks ago. And we were talking about, for wherever two or three are gathered, in my name, I am there among them. Today we claim this promise as we reunite and worship together. In this verse, he fixes, fixes into our understanding of faith the centrality of community in our understanding of who we are as Christians, doesn't he? In the scripture for the first, in 1 Thessalonians, Paul reminds us also of the critical importance of meeting face-to-face -face in person. Because it's primarily through face-to-face -face gathering that our faith is activated, restored, developed, and confirmed, isn't it? The organizing idea for the sermon this morning is found in verse 10 of that scripture in Thessalonians. It says, we continue to pray day and night most earnestly that we may see you face to face and may complete whatever may be imperfect and lacking in your faith. You know, on the surface, the idea here may seem a little odd. If someone wants to see you that bad, well, just drive on over, right? We don't see how an obstacle be, could be so great as to keep someone from seeing us face to face up until COVID-19, right? When we may feel the urgency to see someone that we cannot see, the grandchildren that we love, grandparents, relatives, loved ones, people who are in social isolation, <clears throat> and we can't see them, so we begin to pray that God will let us see them. My mask is falling. You're not policing me. 
We're not good at policing here, are we? No, I'm not a good policeman. I thought about getting a, a uh, <clears throat> security guy in the guard uniform, and I think Claire said, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> so, but up until COVID-19, hang on, let me try this. If I can get this thing to, to stay there, In this time, it's more reasonable to, because people have been deprived of being together. The virus gives us new meaning. It gives new meaning to Paul's words about being together. The second part of the sentence gives us another odd idea, if we think about it. We continue to pray night and day most earnestly that we may see your face and then this clause and may complete whatever may be imperfect and lacking in your faith. I wouldn't usually think of someone else having the power to complete whatever is lacking in my faith. I imagine you feel the same way. Great, great. Can you tie this again to the top one? The top one is slipping. Oh, that's where we tie Perfect, actually. That's right. All right. I wouldn't usually think of someone completing my faith, and I'm sure you would not either. So we're thinking, does he plan on teaching them something? Does he have something to bring them? Uh, special instructions? Uh, how is it that Paul's face to face presence will complete their faith? We would ask naturally. And it, it just seems that it's not what he brings to the community in terms of wisdom or personality or his standing, nor is it what's missing, is what's missing something Paul needs to perform, I would say. When we met for our weekly study, the newcomers group, this last Thursday, there were three of us, four if you include Megan. <clears throat> it wasn't what we needed from one another that made our reunion so great. It was the fact that we were together. And I think that's what Paul is getting at. Something is made complete in us being together. The presence of each person filled something in, something that would have been missing otherwise. <clears throat> what makes the believers in Thessalonica Complete is the presence of other Christians. By being present, we complete what Paul speaks of as lacking in one another. By our being present to one another, Christ brings us into oneness of body and spirit. Paul asserts in verse 10, as I repeat it, we continue to pray day and night most earnestly that we may see you face to face and may complete whatever may be imperfect and lacking in your faith. This suggests that we become perfect and lacking nothing through our togetherness itself. I was in another group meeting and one of the people in the study said, God speaks to me through other people when we're together. When we're not together, I feel like I don't hear what God is trying to tell me in my life. And he also said that when we're together, I feel like God leads me to say things and contribute in ways that I would not outside of the group. But something happens in that being together. The Spirit works among us, among them. Giving instruction and guidance, nourishment, strength, faith. It's likely that Paul doesn't know what it is that will make the faith of the Thessalonians complete until he is with them, actually. Because that's when the Spirit moves most of the time. There's a lot of research studies done on getting together and togetherness and uh, how people are affected when they are together with one another. One study suggests that being together gives one a subjective experience 
of feeling understood and connected to others. We no longer fear because in our connection, we are safe. As a result, the energy we produce is positive, affirming, and proactive. I need to get to see my smile when I can. I'm smiling right now. <laughs> we act without fear, without fear of life because we have a common identity. I just love to say that and hear it. My identity is connected to you and it is, it's, a, it's purpose in our community. As Paul put it, <clears throat> we are made complete in our being. People around us notice, may notice that we're not afraid, and it may bring hope to their lives as well. We know there are people around us who are afraid. And your fearlessness, your sense of optimism and hope, will influence, bring light into that place where they are facing difficulties. In our togetherness, Christ comes to life, Christ is honored, Christ is beckoned. So what I'm saying is not untested theory, right? It's not my opinion. It's been proven over and over again down through the ages of Christian heritage and history. Every time Christian faith has been challenged, all of it is right here in the good book. Christians do not run away from one another. They run to each other. Because like Paul, the Christian identity means nothing without community. <clears throat> Continuing in verse 11, now may our God and Father himself and Jesus our Lord guide our steps to you by removing the obstacles that stand in our way. <clears throat> Shelley mentioned that the Ad Council has been meeting once a month. We met more than once a month. We met probably three times in the last month, or two months. It's probably two, three, two, three four times. And <clears throat> many of you have been praying this prayer about God bringing us back together, removing the obstacles for us being in community and having fulfillment. We've all prayed for a variety of things, for a cure, for a vaccine, for the curve to flatten, and I'm sure you, like me, have been praying for other things as well. And it took us, the Ad Council and leadership, a great effort to get to this point. A lot of wrestling with ideas and how to respond and how to comply. A lot of fear and trembling, actually. A lot of negotiating with one another, how to proceed, managing different views of masking or not masking, social distancing, trying to be in compliance and understanding the science, and yet moving toward being together. <clears throat> the conversations I've had with people from a wide spectrum of views on this situation, kind of like emotional whiplash, so I just want you also to know that the council didn't move a step forward with the, without examining everything <clears throat> very carefully. Why did we focus so hard on this? Because our hearts and minds are so intertwined with this community. It's vital to the life of each person on the council to retain our sense of community. And I want you to know you have a really great leadership team here. If you're on the Ad Council, please stand. Let us just recognize you. If you're on the Administrative Council of RIM, please stand. Let us recognize you. The love of Christ drives us into relationship, face-to-face -face living. In spite of how hard it can be at times, we continue to connect, and in doing so, we find our common purpose. Our
purpose is defined by what we go through together. Our purpose is defined by what we go through together. The struggles, the arguments, the joys, the discoveries of faith life that come as a result of that togetherness. The annoying person that you have a hard time with. <clears throat> it's a message about togetherness and faith brings feelings of thankfulness, joy, hopefulness, grace, and confidence. When an AA group first started meeting up again, I was told that by one person who was there said they were so happy they just forgot about the agenda and were laughing and smiling and looking at each other. <laughs> it was just this great sense of togetherness. They were giddy, so happy to be back together. In this verse, Paul longs to be with these faithful people because faith to faith connection is where his faith is stimulated and made complete. Community is where his faith life begins. <clears throat> so in our return today, it helps us to remember why we're here to fulfill our responsibilities as Christians, to demonstrate unity through the Lord's Supper, communion, to exercise our spiritual gifts in service, to fellowship, to confess our sins to one another, to witness Christ in one another, and to develop trust. In an article in Forbes magazine, which talks about the importance of face-to-face -face meetings. One of the people interviewed said, no matter what industry you're in, we are all in the people business. Regardless of how tech savvy you may be, face-to-face -face meetings are still the most effective way to capture the attention of participants and engage them in a conversation. If we don't continue to nurture strong and positive personal relationships with our clients and co-workers, we won't build trust. A study in the Harvard Business Review revealed that 87% of professionals consider face-to-face -face communication as essential in closing business deals. And 95% 95 of those respondents called it crucial in forming lasting business relationships. Face-to-face -face communication is crucial to forming lasting Christian relationships as well. And being together, we build trust in one another to be open so we can grow in faith and hear the Lord's instruction. These examples help us see the importance of community, recognize togetherness that Paul speaks about as being key. <clears throat> COVID-19 is not the first challenge to Christians. We're part of a great Christian religious heritage that gives us the tools for dealing with any and every crisis. We have God, we have one another, and we have scripture. <clears throat> In this grand experiment of population control under COVID-19, no area of our lives has not been touched by this national attention to the COVID-19 virus. No doubt you have grown personally because of the limits placed on your life. No doubt you took care of things that you would otherwise not paid attention to or taken care of. No doubt your faith has been tested in new ways. And our model for facing COVID-19 is no longer is no longer defined by social isolation. We place confidence in science, but not to the exclusion of faith. As Paul shares with us here this morning in the scripture, there is a need and a longing to be together that the Spirit might work. In the community of faith, we find real strength to face disease, disaster, and everything else. We are safe together. Paul was longing to be with these Christians 
and it was very hard for him to be a part. He did everything in his power to reach out to them and connect until he could be with them. We long to be together because every person adds something to community. Right now, there's someone missing your face-to-face -face connection. And I'm sure that you're missing someone else's face-to-face -face connection as well. As we go on with our day, we are reminded that we need to be the light of the world for those who may not have any light right now. Be the comfort to those who are hiding away in fear. Be listening, the listening ear for that person who may come your way this week. Jesus might be speaking to you through this community where two or more are gathered. Now join me in singing hymn 630, Come Be Coming to Us, the Living Forever. <laughs>
stay for conversation. We will have the conversation after the postcode. Now receive the benediction. May Christ in all his power bring him liberation today. May his life free you from all doubt so that you will walk with confidence and conviction. Go in peace. God, shut that off.